In 395 AD, the mighty Roman Empire split like a cellular organism into two. The Western Roman Empire ruled from Rome and the Byzantine Empire ruled from Byzantium, also known as Constantinople or as we know it today, Istanbul. The idea behind the split was to help the realms prosper and defend themselves more efficiently. It was believed that having two equal emperors would lessen the number of power struggles that had been taking place within the Roman Empire for decades. However, that didn't change much and neither changed the bizarre and evil punishments that were used as a deterrent against uprisings and revolutions. But laws could only be as strong as the people implicating them. Some rulers turned out too weak and some ruled with an iron fist, pardoning no one. The Byzantine Empire ruled for nearly a thousand years, and today on Nutty History, we are looking for what punishments Byzantine emperors employed to keep things in check. Viewer discretion is advised for this video, as some of this video may be offensive or disturbing. We, the makers of this video, in no way support or condone the actions of the subjects featured. There is one organ of our body that can never escape our peripheral vision. The nose. You may not be aware of it all the time, but you are staring at it literally every second your eyes are open. It's an important organ for the respiratory system. It also helps keep your glasses on. However, Voldemort and Tyrion Lannister, no, not that, I'm asking for the real Tyrion Lannister, perfect, has shown us something about the noselessness. It's that it is not quite pretty. The nose of a human face is like the do drug. It really ties up the proverbial room together. They peed on your progress. And people back in medieval times really valued their noses. Even today, in South Asian countries and the Middle East, the nose is considered a matter of prestige and integrity. And it goes all the way back to the Byzantine Empire, where people considered having a nose a necessity to become an emperor. In Byzantine culture, the emperor was a reflection of heavenly authority. Since God was perfect, the emperor also had to be unblemished. Any major injury, especially facial wounds, would debar an individual from acquiring the throne. Cutting off someone's nose also made them look like a criminal. It branded them and marred their visage. For the rest of their life, they would be perceived as a schemer, a loser, or a traitor. Ask Justinian II. The man had a golden nose forged for himself to remain an emperor after an uprising cost him his original nose. Justinian II was a son of Constantine IV and his wife Anastasia. He ascended the throne at the mere age of 16 in the year 685 and is known for his brutal and oppressive regime. He was fascinated by the glory of old Rome and wanted the Byzantine Empire to regain that grandeur. His father's successful reign and many victories set Justinian II up for success, particularly in the eastern provinces of the empire. Justinian also managed to compromise a treaty with the Caliph Abd al-Malik ibn Marwan in order to make the island of Cyprus neutral land, in addition to striking against Arab rulers and acquiring higher rates of annual tribute. Cyprus was previously split between the Arab rulers and the Byzantines. Also, Justin II regained Balkan lands for the Byzantines and captured the city of Thessaloniki from the Bulgars in 688 through 689. He then later used the army of Slavs against the Arabs in a series of battles, but was defeated at the Battle of Sebastopolis. The reason for his loss was a defection and a central betrayal of a Slavic army, and Justinian II retaliated immediately. He annihilated as many Slavs as he could, and he punished religious minorities particularly Manichaeans and even Christians whose beliefs were not Chalcedonian in origin. His tyranny and greed for tax money pleased both the aristocracy and peasants. An uprising followed and the angry mob cut off Justinian II's nose as he was dethroned and exiled. While in exile, Justinian II had a gold replica of his nose smithed and wore the prosthetic for the rest of his life. Justinian II regained control of the empire in 705 but he also remained infamous as Rhino Meadows, or the Slit-Nosed, for the rest of his life. Maiming in the Byzantine Empire was a standard method of punishment for criminals of the era, but it also had a role in the empire's political life. Some disfigurements practiced bore a secondary practical rationale as well. According to some records, there were 38 cases of high-profile maimings in the Byzantine Empire between 637 AD and 1295 AD. Rhinotomy, or removal of the nose, was the third most popular method after blinding and castration. Justinian II was a unique exception, who managed to claim or return to power. In nearly every other case, dismemberment was pretty much a political death knell, and blinding was the most popular method of them all.
There was a time when maiming in the Byzantine Empire was civil and usually stayed above the belt unless for some reason they chose to amputate a leg. But everything changed when the noseless emperor Justinian II attacked. Castration was wildly illegal in the Byzantine Empire before Justinian II's reign. However, at the same time, Constantinople was filled with eunuchs who served in every capacity, from courtiers to priests to generals. The church believed that taking a man's jewels away was morally wrong as it was a power only meant to be used by the god itself. So, the traders would bring young men from other states and kingdoms. The traders would devoid them of their globes just before entering the realm of the Byzantine Empire. But that doesn't mean that the ceremony of demanding didn't happen in Constantinople. Like blinding and rhinotomy, castration too became a powerful political tool after Justinian II, specifically, to end lineages of rival families and end the chance of a descendant taking revenge years later or usurping the throne. In 813, the sons of Michael I Rangabi were neutered by Leo V the Armenian. In 820, Leo V's sons paid for their father's doings when they were neutered by Michael II the Amorite after Michael usurped and eliminated Leo V on the day of Christmas. Another example of neutered royalty was Basil Lecapenos. Lecapenos lost his jewels at a young age. He gained enough power to become Parakaminos, or effective prime minister for three successive emperors, but could never assume the throne. In the span of over 600 years between 637 AD and 1295 AD, 20 of the 38 cases of high-profile maiming were of blinding. Though maiming was a gruesome tool used by Byzantine authorities, they employed blinding to a far greater scope. The reason behind blinding being the most popular and powerful political tool was simple. Why terminate a contender when you could pretend to be noble and let them live with a physical wound instead? Blinding was established as a formal punishment for treachery in 705 AD, but it was used for the same reason for a long time in the Byzantine Empire. The blinding of Byzantine general Belisarius in the 6th century at the order of Emperor Justinian became apocryphal. The legend goes that during the later years of Justinian I's reign, the emperor became jealous and anxious about Commander Flavius Belisarius, who was instrumental in the reconquest of the Mediterranean territory that belonged to the Western Roman Empire a century ago. Considered one of the last of the Romans, the military general was accused of being part of a conspiracy against the emperor. For that, Justinian had him blinded and confiscated his estates. Belisarius lived the rest of his days begging on the streets of Constantinople, or this whole tale was fabricated by 12th century monk John Zetsus, who exaggerated the anecdote of Belisarius briefly falling out of favor in later years of Justinian's reign to create a tale of morality. Another significant instance of blinding comes from the end of the 8th century, nearly 90 years after the establishment of blinding as a designated punishment for treachery. 16-year-old Constantine VI tried to stage a coup against his mother, Irene of Athens, who wasn't abdicating the throne for her son and the rightful heir. Constantine was now of age and was supposed to be ascended to the throne. Even though with the support of the military, Constantine became emperor. Irene retained the title of empress and regained power back in 792 as Constantine VI co-ruler. The power of struggle between the mother and son continued as Constantine had his uncle Nicephorus blinded and his other uncle's tongue split when their revolt failed. Irene led an uprising to take control of the government and had Constantine blinded. She later blinded more relatives when they tried to dethrone her. Surprisingly, Byzantines consider these punishments humane and kinder in contrast to a death punishment. Do you think this was justified? Would you have survived during the Byzantine Empire? Tell us in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching Nutty History.